When we look at chondrules from individual chondrites, it's interesting and important to know whether these chondrules in individual chondrites all have the same composition or have a variation in their bulk composition. And if they have a variation in the bulk composition, whether there are multiple peaks, so some chondrules have one composition, the others in a second composition and a third composition, or whether there is a continuous distribution in the variation of bulk chondral compositions. Now to check this, I use the, the mat base here. And um, I'll start with, for example, the CV chondrites. So I select the CV chondrites and deselect the class and matrix, and then um, use a histogram so I get a, a, a distribution and as elements say magnesium. Now I plot this and what we see here is that first chondrules, bulk chondrules, have a variation in their composition. And it's quite a significant variation because it's from about 10 weight percent to more than 30 weight percent and this is magnesium not MGO. So there's a significant variation in their bulk composition. Secondly, it's a unimodal composition, so it's not multimodal, there's just one peak. And third, this is about normal to maybe a log normal um, distribution of the compositions here. Now, how does this look for the other chondrites? So I add CM, CO, and CR chondrites here, and deselect the class and matrix again, and plot it. As you can see, it looks the same for all the various chondrites groups. So in, in all case, maybe for CM chondrites is a little different, there are not too many data. Um, but in general, chondrules always have a variation in their composition. It's always unimodal and there's always this um, about normal composition. Now let's have a look at a different element, a refractory element, for example, to so say aluminum. And here the picture is a little bit different. Again, there's a variation in the composition down here, but also there's a very long tail to a higher composition. So, um, can enlarge this a little bit. So there are a couple of chondrules with higher aluminum concentrations. So this is a little bit different. So this is sort of multimodal, but it's just a very small amount with this um, different, with this, with this very other compost bulk composition. So how do we explain this? Now in this case, the explanation could be that there was, um, very often is that there was refractory material added to, so refractory material added to the chondrules basically. So maybe CAIs or something like this that were then added to the chondrules. So by this we can explain this. So typically chondrules have, have this composition, but sometimes some aluminum rich composition is added. Now for the magnesium, um, a popular explanation is that the precursors of the chondrules had various compositions were then mixed together and this is the result of the mixing. However, this doesn't work because precursors are very small, micrometers in size. So if 10 to 100,000 to millions of precursors are mixed together to make chondrules, they would always have the average composition of the precursor reservoir. So this doesn't work. So you need a different explanation. Um, Explanation that's possible here is that cones are open system, so exchange material with the surrounding gas. And because cones had different sizes, smaller ones, larger ones, different um, temperatures of the formation, this, so these differences might have caused variations in the exchange and um, exchange of, of material with the surrounding, and this then resulted in this kind of variation here. But in either case, the most important observation here is that chondrules in individual chondrites have significant variations in their composition. It's a unimodal composition and it's about normal to maybe log normal. And this is how the bulk composition of chondral populations in chondrites look like.